Well, hello and welcome to this Bitscope review and presentation of the new Raspberry Pi 7-inch LCD. Like many of you, we've been waiting for this for a long time and we have been rewarded in our wait as we think this thing is quite amazing. To learn more about the uh, display itself, we can recommend Alex Eames' review released yesterday where he outlines what the display is and what it can do. Our goal is to see how we can use it here at Bitscope with Bitscope Micro and other models and our new Bitscope blades. So we have these wall mountable and rack mountable power and uh, mounting solutions for Raspberry Pi. And we've carefully considered it and hopefully it's going to work. We're going to find out to see that we can use it to wall mount a Raspberry Pi with a Bitscope and power it from a 12 volt battery. So without further ado, let's have a look at this new Raspberry Pi display and put it all together. So let's see what we have in the box. If we open it up, we can see the safety guide and all the multilingual information. The key electronics that Raspberry Pi Foundation and Gordon's team have been working on. The driver board looks like a hat, about the size dimensions of a hat, but of course is not a hat. Ribbon cable, mounting accessories, and some jumper leads. and underneath the display itself. Let's have a look. Very nice. So two connectors for the display and presumably the touch screen interface. So here we are with the display ready to assemble with the driver board, the top connector for the touch panel and the bottom one for the display itself. So we'll start as Alex did with the display connector. So we slide that under here, there we go, pushes under and then close Click it together like so. There we have the display connect. Now the tricky part, same deal this time with this much smaller connector here. So first thing to do is to release the clamp a tad and then very gently ease the connector the cable into the connector. So there it is going in. This is tricky, very tricky. Actually, what we might do is mount it and then try and put the clip on. So let's get the accessories pack and find our standoffs. There we go. Screw that in there. And another one in here. Now that the driver board is firmly mounted on the back of the display, Let's try this again. So if we insert the touch layer connector like so, and then put our clamp over the top. So just to be sure that we've actually got this working right, let's have a close look at this. Yeah. That looks like we're actually connected. I must say that was a very tricky step and a fiddly one. 
So just take care that you're working in a space where if the clamp pops off, you don't lose it in the carpet or something. So here at the last step where we connect our Raspberry Pi to the display. First step is to open the connector at the end, just like the other ones. And with the ribbon cable that's supplied, here it is, with the metal pins exposed facing up, we gently insert that like so into the connector. Okay. And then clamp it shut. Done. Next, we get the Raspberry Pi, which is going to mount on the top like so. This is where we all diverge a little bit from Alex's introduction and mount the Raspberry Pi on the back because we have plans for this. So open up the connector here and fold the ribbon cable in and around and down. There we go. Now, instead of using the four supplied screws, we're going to use some extender standoffs, like so. Just like the ones that came with the display, although these ones are nylon. Screw them in the top here. So at this point, we have the completed display driver and the Raspberry Pi connected. Very nice ready to test, although not quite. And here's why. Before you can use your Raspberry Pi with this display, you need to update the software. This is fairly easy to do. So running on a machine we call Donald, we need to run sudo at get update. And this will go and update our repository. And just cutting to the end, we are done. Then we need to do the same thing, sudo at get upgrade. This will pull in all the latest packages, which I'm presuming will be the driver packages. And we're done. So now we need to reboot the machine. Close this and shut down. Reboot. And let's see how we go. We're ready to go, but we need to power the Raspberry Pi and the display. And there's two ways or three ways that Raspberry Pi tell us to do that. You can power them separately. You can power them with a connecting USB cable, or you can power them with some jumper strip, jumper wires, which is what we're going to do. If you have a look at their page here, you can see they've connected them from the Raspberry Pi power pins through to the same pins on the display driver board. We're going to do the same thing with a twist. So we'll get our ground connected here and our five volts connected here, but we're not going to connect them up to the Raspberry Pi. Here's why. Instead of using a USB power, we're going to use one of our new Bitscope blade boards. This one is Duo Pi. As you can see, it's got room for two Raspberry Pis and up the end here, a very powerful regulated power supply. Instead of needing a two amp, five volt USB at power adapter, you simply need anything from about seven volts to 48 volts plugged into here, and you can power your Raspberry Pi. So here's how it works. We will get our display and Raspberry Pi and plug them on like so. There we go. And then down on the board down here, we have 
five volts. And we have ground. And we're ready to go. Now for the final assembly. The first step is to bolt the back on. So we will get some screws and screw them the back of the duo pi to the raspberry pi. <clears throat> and the second one, the lower side is held in place by the J8 connector on the Raspberry Pi plugging into the duo Pi. Now we will install the SD card that we prepared earlier on our other Raspberry Pi called Donald. Now this is a bit tricky. <coughs> Slotting in amongst this ribbon cable here. But we will manage it. There we go. So we now have our software installed, our power board solution all configured. Now what we want to do with this is wall mount it. The way we can do that, if we look on the underside, we see we have some holes here. A convenient way for now to, uh, to do this is with some standoffs with sticky feet. All we need to do is plug one in here in each one. There we go. And we now have a standalone wall mountable self powered display system for Raspberry Pi. So let's give it a go. Okay, so here we are with our camera pointed at the wall. And here's our final assembled unit, which we're going to stick just there. Position it on the wall. Like so. There we go. We now have one wall mounted Raspberry Pi with display. Now, the question is, how are we going to power this thing? Well, we thought we'd use something everyone who's off-grid has handy, a 12-volt battery. So we'll just pop that down here with our cable and plug it in and see if it smokes. Okay. There we go. And we've got a booting up sequence of the Raspberry Pi. Turn the light off, we can see what's going on a bit better. Brilliant. Just like a bought one. And there we are. We have the complete Raspberry Pi set up with our Bitscope Pi software, which is basically a slightly modified version of Raspbian. Let's see what we've got in here. Uh, let's try Bitscope Meter. There we go. Perfect. Now, if we get a bit scope, let's see if this is going to work. We've got a bit scope micro, again, for set up for country use, let's say, off grid, waterproof, in some 20 millimeter industrial PVC tubing with a uh, BNC adapter for one of the channels on the front, USB port on the back. So, if we just reach in behind and plug it in. There we go. It's now powered. Now we'll use a signal from the signal generator here. Just a little contraption. And we'll connect it up. There we go. And let's see if we can make this thing work. Okay, let's turn the waveform generator off. And it looks like the waveform generator is not actually working. But the software is, so is the bit scope. Let's see if we can find something else to plug into a signal for this. So, turns out the problem was a flat battery and our 
little battery operated waveform generator. So let's see if we can get it to work now. There we go. Brilliant. Just try tipping to one square wave, sine wave, changing the frequency. So there we have it. The complete battery powered, built on the wall, test measurement data acquisition system for a frighteningly low number of dollars. Hope you enjoyed it. See you soon.